picture this. A single man, barely clinging to life, struggles through the snow-covered mountains of Afghanistan on a dying horse. His body is frozen, his strength all but gone, but he presses on. When he finally reaches the British garrison at Jalalabad, one of the soldiers asks, where is the rest of the army? The man's chilling response, I am the army. That man was William Bryden, the only survivor of a 16,500-strong British force that had been decimated during one of the most devastating retreats in military history. But how did it come to this? To understand this extraordinary story, we need to go back to the start of the First Anglo-Afghan War. It's the early 1800s, and the British Empire, which controls India, is locked in a tense power struggle with Russia. Both empires are racing to expand their influence in Central Asia, a conflict known as the Great Game. Afghanistan, caught in the middle, becomes the critical buffer zone. Fearing that Russia might expand into India, the British decide to invade Afghanistan in 1839. A massive force of 21,000 soldiers and 7,000 camp followers marches into Afghanistan that year. They quickly capture Ghazni, a key fortress, and move on to Kabul, the capital. There, they install Shah Shuja, a former Afghan ruler, as a puppet king. But for the Afghan people, this foreign occupation is a bitter pill to swallow. As the years pass, resentment toward the British grows. The foreign installed Shah Shuja and his British backers are seen as out-of-touch outsiders, disrupting Afghan customs, ignoring local power structures, and imposing foreign rule. By 1841, tensions finally boil over. Akbar Khan, the son of the ousted Emir Dost Muhammad, leads an uprising in Kabul, rallying thousands of Afghans to expel the British. November 1841 sees Kabul erupt into rebellion. Afghan fighters, fueled by fury, overwhelm the British forces, capturing key positions. Cut off, outnumbered, and facing a brutal winter, the British realize they have no choice but to negotiate with Akbar Khan for a safe retreat. In January 1842, around 4,500 soldiers and 12,000 camp followers, including women, children, and servants, begin their infamous retreat from Kabul. The only route out? narrow, icy mountain passes, but the retreat quickly turns into a death march. As they make their way through the freezing mountain passes, Afghan forces launch merciless ambushes from above. The British soldiers are picked off one by one, freezing to death, starving, or succumbing to the constant attacks. Every few miles, the British suffer staggering losses, struggling to defend themselves against the overwhelming forces in the cramped, ice-bound ravines. By the time the retreat ends, it's nothing short of a massacre. Of the 16,500 people who had set out from Kabul, only one man makes it through to Jalalabad, a grim broken figure on a wounded horse. Dr. William Bryden arrives at the fort, barely alive. When asked where the rest of the army is, he simply replies, I am the army. His arrival becomes the haunting symbol of Britain's catastrophic failure in Afghanistan, a defeat that would scar the British Empire for years. In response to the slaughter, the British launch a punitive expedition to rescue hostages and punish Kabul, but the cost is too high. Soon after, they're forced to retreat again. The First Anglo-Afghan War ends in disaster for the British, and it becomes clear that Afghanistan is a land that will not be easily controlled. It's no wonder the country would come to be known as the Graveyard of Empires. The British would return in 1878 for a Second Anglo-Afghan War, and again in 1919 for a third. But each invasion would end in failure. By the time the Third Anglo-Afghan War ended, Afghanistan had gained full independence from British influence. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for more historical deep dives.